Hey guys, Nugs B here. Just wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsors of For the Record, and today I'm going to be thanking Advanta Clean of the Tri-State. They specialize in all industrial cleaning you would need for your home and commercial locations as well. Advanta Clean of the Tri-State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. They uh, provide mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. The owners of this great establishment are Pam and Joel Dooley. So if you want to slide on over to Facebook... If you're watching on Facebook, just go ahead and type it into the top of your search bar, AdvantaClean of the Tri-State. Or you can check them out on their website at www.AdvantaClean.com slash Ashland-KY. And like I said, that's ran by Pam and Joel Dooley. And if you need to call them, just give them a shout at 606 331 Five zero zero one, or if you want to stop in at their uh, location, it's four 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 six Thirteenth Street, Ashland KY. And like I said, these are great people, great friends of mine, and you guys definitely got to check them out if you have any issues with your home or your commercial location for your business or whatever it may be. So make sure to give them a call. Go over to their Facebook page, give them a like, share their page, and if possible, tell them Taylor sent you. I really appreciate it, guys. Let's go ahead and get this episode started. Oh, uh, uh, it's for the record, son. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the, it's for the record, I said it's for the. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Nugs B coming to you with episode 29 for the record, baby. You know I got the magical Stevie J, a.k.a. S. Jekylls. What's up, baby? How you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. How you doing, Nugs? You already know, bro. Just cooling. Had a great session with you earlier. We're trying to get these beats together for you all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Production team is in progress, baby. So, I'm going to start this episode, as usual, with the entertainment history. July 8th, 2003, a tooth from the mouth of Elvis Presley, once the property of former girlfriend Linda Thompson, goes up for auction on eBay along with a lock of his hair and a gold record. It fetches over $100,000. And it's hilarious, bro. It's super (laughs) ironic because we were literally just talking about how we both don't really like Elvis. And this guy literally got one of his teeth. Sold for $100,000, bro. That uh, is crazy, man. J- just because it's for the record. I, I know my wife is going to see this, and I'm sure my mother-in-law will, too. <laughs> it, look, Elvis Elvis was... I respect Elvis for what he had, he did for music. Um, Me as well. Likewise. Um I just personally, I'm not that big of a fan of him. He has yeah. some good songs, and, and me and you talked about that. Absolutely, but Lord. If I let my Classic mother, songs. if I let my mother in law hear that I say I don't like Elvis, she <laughs> she, she might not want to be my mother in law no more. So, for, for the That's record, funny. for the record, Elvis is okay in my book, but uh, we're not gonna let him play in the car like you said. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hundred thousand dollars for one tooth, man. Come <laughs> on, that's crazy. I can't believe that. That's an expensive tooth fairy. Crazy, man. So, July 8th, 2000, The Real Slim Shady debuts at number one in the UK, giving Eminem his first chart topper on the singles chart. He doesn't reach number one in America until two years later with Lose Yourself. Dude, that was seriously probably one of his best, like, if we're talking overall songs, like, not bars, you know? I'm not talking bars. I'm not talking whatever. I'm talking a story as a rap song. Probably one of the best out. I agree. I mean, you got. I mean, you got to give credit where it's due. And Eminem was definitely a bar rapper, but that song that deserved to be number one. I, that's, that's that's a deserveable number one hit. I, I I'll give him that. And For when sure. he was in his prime, he 
He was on top as far as oh, rap, as far as rappers went when when he was in his prime. You oh know, yeah, he, man. He was killing people. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I I give him his respect. He he definitely earned it. And last but not least, the third uh, thing I got for you all today is July eighth, nineteen seventy three. Bill Withers, "Lean on Me" hits number one as well. Hey, West Virginia hey, baby, shout Bill out. Withers baby, shout out. Bill Withers. That's what I'm talking about, dude. He's so awesome, man. I yeah. love I love Bill Withers. He yeah. was so he was he was so awesome, dude. So awesome. Uh, I got a really interesting fact of the day for you all as well. And that is Venus has the longest day of any planet in our solar system. It completes one rotation every 243 Earth days. Its days last longer than its orbit. It orbits the sun every 224.65 Earth days. So a day is nearly 20 Earth days longer than its year. Venus, dude. That's so crazy, man. It has the longest days out of any planet that we're aware of right now. So, like, I want to know, is that, like, quadruple shift you working? Or I do don't you know. <laughs> <laughs> gonna, your, time, you, day, your time is going to be all messed up. Yeah, you can get your whole 40 What are the zones, day, man? Yeah, what you, are the zones <laughs> on, on a day like that? I mean, you're living a crazy life. I can right. only imagine. Like, would the, I mean, is, like, the sun out for, like, an extended amount of time? I don't know. Then, then, I really then, don't know. it starts to set for, you know? Because, well, I mean, it talks about... You know, the way it orbits the sun. So I'm going to assume that's how it works because, you know, it's set in like a circular thing. So it's right. further away. So I don't think it would see it or it would see it more often maybe or not as much. I don't know exactly the details Either on that. Either it's going to be 12 hours yeah. plus of, of, oh, yeah. of darkness or Oh, light. yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's one of the two. Yeah. One of the two. That's, that's crazy, crazy yeah, man. That's, nice. that's wild. Wild, man. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to get into Raiders Review after this. Uh, I just want to go ahead and take a moment to thank everybody who's been tuning in. Thank you so much, guys, for all the shares and all the comments and all the engagement you all have been leaving, the messages. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, we can't do it without you guys. We're just trying to keep it going, keep it funky, you know, and get everything right. I got my boy S. Jekylls, you already know. In the building. We chilling, baby. We chilling. And also, yeah, uh, so let them know, you know, let them know a little bit about what you're doing right now and where they can go check you out and, you know, uh, just let them know about you, bro. Okay. Um, uh, well, for those who don't know, um, Stevie J, a.k.a. S. Jekylls. S. Jekylls is um, it, it, it's my, I guess you can call superhero persona. Superhero, if you, baby. If you will. Um, my music movement is to create change and inspire the youth and or somebody who needs help. Um, I, I refrain from using profanity in any of my music. Will Smith, baby. Yeah. You but, already know. But I get a little bit more deeper, I would say, than what Will did. So it's not of as commercialized. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm course. still, I, I like to keep it on the side of, of what people, the vibe people want to hear, but still kind of kind of just give it a twist and, and do something that, that most artists aren't doing today. Well-rounded, my friend. Um, uh, so uh, with that being said, I do have a YouTube page. You can follow me at s.jekels, um, S period, J-E-K-E-L-S. Um, right now, we I'm in the starting stages of my EP, trying to get everything together, what I want to do as far as releasing that and a couple singles as well. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And also, I'll drop his links in the uh, description on this video, so you can just click on those. You ain't got to search too much. Uh, so whoever's watching this, make sure to go check my man out. And uh, make sure to subscribe, subscribe, hit that bell, so you can get the notifications when he drops new uh, material. And uh, go share it on your Facebook, Twitter, or yeah, wherever yeah, you like well, it. You know? There's a Facebook, too. I have S. Jekyll's, uh, my music page on Facebook as well. So you can go check that one out, and all the past music I've done is on is on both of those sites. So yeah, we'll make sure to get everything in the description. Be sure to go check that out and share that on all of your uh, social media outlets that you are using, my friend: Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So we're gonna get into Raiders review, guys. So I'm gonna let Stevie go first. We chose our top songs of 2006. <laughs> And we we picked five because there were so many great ones. We just we couldn't decide on three. Right. You know, yeah. we had to throw five, bro, because it was seriously just a great year for music in general. It was great, dude. It was seriously, I mean, arguably one of the best years in my opinion of music since the new millennium. Yeah, absolutely. This absolutely. in two thousand eight, two thousand six, two thousand eight. I feel like those are key points. You know, yeah, two thousand six was a music. great year. That's uh, yeah, those years they they set me free from <laughs> high school. So, um. Well, and now that I'm looking at my list that I selected, me being a, a rap artist, I've only selected one rap song from that year, which is <laughs> ironic. Um, but in no particular order, um, 
uh, So Sick by Neo. Yeah, son. You already um, know we so sick of love songs out here, hey, baby. We sick. That, that When that came out, that was... Oh, yeah. man. Neo was the man. Yeah. He's great, dude. I love him. Like, being in the ski lodge on the on the phone in the video, <laughs> like, it was it was Killer, the best. Killer, dude. Killer. Um, I got to shout out, you know, Beyonce. She's still Queen doing B, her thing. Baby. Irreplaceable came Queen out in 2006. B. So, that was, that, was, that was a classic song. Yes, sir. Um, Narls Barkley Crazy, hey. a.k.a. CeeLo Green. I, mm. I, I've been rocking with CeeLo since the Dungeon Family. So yeah, bro. I, and I, st- I still respect his music to this Goody day. Goody Mob. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, uh, Also from Atlanta, we got uh, Young Dro, Shoulder Lean. Shoulder Lean. And, hey. and you know, I I was a big Dro fan, but Dro kind of, he kind of fizzled out a little bit. He yeah, had a couple yeah, songs, you know what I'm saying? But, and he, but he still... He still has, I mean, the latest song he had, FDB, I think that was the latest one mm-hmm. that got, you know, a lot of exposure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it did, I forgot about that, actually. He's, he's still, he, he's still unique, but he just, it didn't it didn't catch on like I he, thought it should have. He so. was like, he was th- that group of guys that made one awesome banger, and yeah. then it was just like, boom, everybody remixed it, who was famous. Yeah. And that's how he blew up. Yeah. It was like D4L, they did that a lot, too. A lot, a lot of um, respect they ain't got on Young that Dro, who was the guy, who was the guy that did, uh, oh my gosh, there was a couple other, uh, uh, through that era, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh man. Oh, I can't remember. Chain Hang Low was kind of similar too. I feel like a lot of people did. They did the remix and stuff. Yeah. I feel like that kind of blew that guy up a little bit, and the mm-hmm. video did. So like, yeah, I feel like that whole era of guys like they blew up, and then everybody remixed their song, and then they just never made another hit, and then they just lived off that money. Yeah. Or they did whatever I, I they bet did. If I, I, I got really a check of off of one song that got remixed, I probably wouldn't oh, do no more either. Gosh, so. that's true, bro. They probably got. I mean, if they got good royalty deals on that, I'm they're sure probably they still did. getting paid. Yeah, absolutely. Probably still getting paid. And last but not least, and. Just because I I'm a big fan of this guy Justin Timberlake, sexy Man, back and JT baby. People can say what they want, but JT baby. As far as a as far as a performer and a oh, music artist, God, one of the most talented. He he's the best we have in our generation, oh, in my dude. opinion. Oh, dude. So, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's my top five. Like I said, no particular order, but those would be. And there's so many more songs that came out that year, but just to oh, narrow yeah. it down, and we had to pick five, and yeah. it was hard to pick five because so, there were so many great ones. That, those are the ones I'm going with. Yeah. Uh, so I, I kicked mine off with Danny California by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. That was the first one I wanted to rock with. Yeah. And it's actually funny because the Red Hot Chili Peppers, they ended up uh, being sued by Tom Petty uh, for that riff on Danny California in the very beginning yeah. because uh, his com- – it wasn't like Tom Petty doing it, but like his company, whoever owned the Masters to Last Dance with Mary Jane – Sued Red Hot Chili Peppers in one yeah. uh, because the very beginning it's like boom, 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 boom. like it's like the same uh, rhythm or whatever cadence or whatever as Last Dance with Mary Jane and Tom Petty's you know lawyers or whatever ended up winning. Right, pretty crazy. Little fun fact. Uh, next song I chose was "It's Going Down" by Young Jock, yeah. just because, bro. I mean, I don't care who you were when that song came out. Everybody who was anybody knew that song. And bro. knew the dance. And you knew, knew the, the dance, knew the dance, bro. It everybody was had killer. a bit everybody had a white t shirt that I'm was eight you. sizes too big for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. They wore shorts that hung like two inches from the I remember ground. the days, yeah. man. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Two thousand six. What a good time. What a what a grand time. Yeah. But yeah, uh I also chose So Sick just because you already know Neo's just He's just phenomenal, man. Yeah. He's great. Uh, and then I chose Why You Wanna by T.I. Just because, man, like when T.I. first came T. out, God, man, I loved everything he did. I didn't find one song I didn't he like by him. still, to this day, Fire. kills anything that he's Oh, he's won. great, dude. And people can Hustle say what gang, they want. They're, but they're sick, dude. And to this day, T.I. still, and he's one of those artists that just he has his own sound, and you, you, can't, oh, yeah. you can't mimic what he does. No. Nope. It's like... He has like a like a twang, but it's like a gritty twang. That's like I don't even you can't even explain it, man. He just when you hear his, him, you know it's him. And his delivery is so fast. Yeah, it's people weird. Don't, people don't even realize how fast his delivery is until you try to recite one of his verses, and you're like, how did how did he get all of that without you know and, and breathing and everything else? Yeah, yeah, man. He uh, he's nasty, bro. Yeah, nasty. He's definitely he's definitely he t- one of my influences. He talked about. He talked about uh, the song that he was on on Thank Me Later with Drake. 
Oh, man, I got to look it up. I can't remember what song it is. But anyways, he was on The Breakfast Club. This was a while ago. And he said that he had the opportunity to sign Drake, bro. And he was like, you know, Charlamagne was like, oh, yeah, you must be mad, you know, that uh, you didn't sign him or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, of course, man. But he's like, dude, this was pre-Beard Drake, you know. He was like, this is a different Drake. You know, he wasn't. This is Aubrey. You know, yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was saying, dude. It was so funny. It was he fancy. Was actually, he was Him Jimmy in the wheelchair when he Believe was on the grass. Yes, bro. Yes. It was uh, fancy. Yeah, bro. Uh, T.I. and Swiss Beats. I think that was the first time T.I. had met him. I'm pretty sure. One of the first times he met her. Maybe the first time he did a song with him. And he was talking to Charlamagne. And Charlamagne was like... Uh, he was saying something like, you know, whatever. And he was like, yeah, man, this is pre-beard Drake. You know, this was a different guy, you know, yada, yada. He wasn't, you know, killing it like, you know, whatever. Right. And it was very true, man. Think about it. You know, his mixtapes were awesome. They were great. But he wasn't that big yet. Like, no. in comparison now, he's one of the I – mean, dude, he's seriously one of the biggest artists ever. But, I ever. mean, his – his first mixtape, he had two vi- two or three videos oh, dude. From, uh, from a mixtape song. He literally probably made millions off that mixtape. Yeah. That mixtape yeah. blew him up, dude. Thank Me Later and uh, what was the other one? Uh, November, uh, no, uh, hold his, on. So Far of, Gone. Yeah, that, that's what it was. It had November 18th on it. And the one, well, what was the one uh, with Eminem on it? and uh, Forever? Yeah, Forever. With Kanye oh, yeah, West. Yeah, there you go, yep, yep. Dude, that was great. It, that was a great it song. Was, it made a soundtrack. That Literally. Year. It made a soundtrack. LeBron's movie that he put out. Yeah. He made that soundtrack. Yeah. So, dude, yeah, that's that, one that of them blew songs him up. you're still getting paid for. And it, oh, yeah, and it's dude. It's completely his. Straight up. And the last one I chose was I Know You See It by Young Jock. Once again, Young Jock was on fire in 2006. I know he was you killing see it, bro. It. Killing it, bro. <laughs> God, he was sick. Uh, yeah, so that wraps it up for our top songs of 2006. We're going to keep it moving, guys. And on this one, we chose our top three movies of 2006. Stevie, you go ahead and kick it off, brother. Top three movies. Once again, in no particular order. And and I, honestly, I didn't want to have to cut it down to three on this, but we... We did. We ended yeah, up doing it because there was a lot of great yeah, movies that came out, too. A lot of good movies. Um, Blood Diamond. Um, that's a classic movie to this day. I can watch that movie over and over and never get tired of it. It's based on real events too. Absolutely. That's what's, you know, super interesting about it. It it was one of those first movies that, that was a, you know, eye opener for people. 100% about Africa. Yeah. About how things are going and how diamonds are collected. Yeah. And, you know, that's not a joke when they say, you know, you you got blood diamonds. There was blood traded for those diamonds. Absolutely. Like, that is the truth. And it's been going on for years, but you're right, dude. This was one of the first movies that really shed light on Africa. Yeah. You know, when it comes to civil war in their uh, countries that, you know, things are going on right now and, you know. Or or, or one that, that maybe got as much exposure as it did because there, yeah. may, there may have been movies oh, that yeah. we haven't seen. Yeah. So. But this was like one yeah. that was like, that, boom. Yeah, you know, that was there. Up. Yeah, Hollywood, yeah. everything else, red yeah. carpet. Yeah. Um, number two, Night at the Museum. Yeah, baby, Ben hey, Stiller. Listen here. Love it. Both of them are great. Dude, yeah. I'll yeah. still watch those to this day. My kids love them. I love them. Yeah. Night uh, Museum is awesome, dude. Great. I remember watching it in theaters. Yeah. It was good. Um, I, I still, love Ben Stiller, man. Yeah, He's hilarious. Like, I, I still want to go. I still want to go to the national museums and see if dude, I can that would see be something the move. Smithsonian stuff. That'd be super <laughs> cool, man. I'm trying to stay the night. Yeah, we'll see, see if these things wake up. Yeah, and it's funny, man, because if you think back, you know, not a lot of people will remember, but one of I think it was the Pharaoh. Can't remember which one it was, but the, whoever when they were trying to transport a Pharaoh or something, they were doing something like that. And the Pharaoh was Rami Malik, bro. Yeah. It was him. And, like, you know, you can go back and look, and it's like, dude, he played, you know, now he, you know, he played Freddie Mercury. That's going to be his biggest role he's ever played, honestly. I mean, he could outdo it, but that's, like, his right. most known, you know, as to date, you know, up to date or whatever. Right. And uh, Mr. Robot as well. Did you watch any of that? Yeah. Dude, it was pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty interesting. Christian Slater, you know, that was pretty cool, you know. Yeah, pretty absolutely. Oh, interesting, man. But yeah, Night Museum, that was really cool, man. Such a great movie, dude. Yeah, well, Ben Stiller's great. He's been great since Heavyweights. Meet the parents, baby, <laughs> in Heavyweights. God. Um, and number three was Deja Vu with Denzel Washington. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I know a lot of people probably never saw this movie. I think yeah, they I sold never it saw like, it. I think they sold a double copy at Walmart for like 10 bucks, that <laughs> and something else. Like is what it came down to, but it's yeah. actually a great movie. Yeah, I, I never saw it, dude. I need to check it out. Yeah, and I mean... It's it's really hard to explain. Like it's called deja vu because there's some kind of time machine that they use or mm-hmm. or, or some of that aspect and ends up it's almost like uh what's the one movie um 
where they talk on the phones, um, where the guy's dad is dead and um, – He's in the house. I think they're from Philadelphia or something like that. Frequency, mm. maybe. I think it's what it's uh, called. Yeah, Frequency. yeah, yeah. I think that is right. Hold on, I'll look that up right yeah, now. Yeah, it's I think a, that's something right. along those lines to where you know they 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 can see somebody saw into the future and a person in the future can see the past and go yeah. change the past and things like that. So it's a really good movie though. Yeah. Frequency. Think, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, that was right. Good call. Good call, bro. Uh, yeah. But I, yeah, I never saw. I'm gonna have to check it out now, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I always I, like I saw the trailer. and I remember when it came out. I just never watched it, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my top three was The Departed, just because, man. I mean, Scorsese, man, you can't go wrong. No. You can't go wrong. Yeah, Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg, Leonardo DiCaprio, Anthony Anderson. I mean, the list goes on. Like the you know, hitters. Martin Sheen. Yeah. I mean, God, it's crazy. A very uh, probably not well known movie, but Lucky Number Slevin actually made my list as well. Yeah. Simply because it was, yeah, you know, I feel like it was super underrated, but it's actually really, really cool. It's got Bruce Willis in it, uh, Morgan Freeman, and I can't remember the uh, the main guy's actual name, but it's super, super cool. Check that out, guys, for sure. Lucky Number Slevin, super great. And last but not least, the third choice of mine was Talladega Nights' Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Come on, baby. <laughs> you know, dude. I, f- I personally, if I had to choose, you know, like top ten comedies of like, if, you know, first time I ever saw it, it's probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. That's definitely on my top ten. Absolutely. Has to be, bro. Absolutely. And I, 40 Old Virgin, like said, that's I, another one. I wanted to pick it, but there were so many. So, like I said, I wanted to give a little, you so know, many, dude, a different flavor on oh, mine. Yeah. But absolutely, Talladega Nights, anything that Will Ferrell's in, great, bro, and, uh, great. Semi Pro, that was hilarious, dude. That was that, so funny. One of, Semi Pro is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. So as far, funny, as far man. as comedy goes. Oh yeah, dude, it's great. Uh, yeah, Blades of Blades, Blades of, Fury. of Glory, Blades Glo- of Glory. Glory, yeah, Glory. bro, Blades of Glory with uh, John Heater. Yeah, dude, that movie is that hilarious. was funny. Hilarious, man, that was even, so funny. Even Will's later stuff with Kevin Hart. Yeah, uh, Get Hard. <laughs> Get Hard was good. Uh, what else did he do that was real funny that was recent? Obviously, Step Brothers. That's a given. You already know. You don't Step have to Brothers. name that one. He was in Wedding Crashers. People yeah, he was. Yeah, that. he yeah, crashed he was. funerals. Yes, he was the main guy. He was the guy that started it all. Yeah. He was. Yeah, he lived with his mom. Yeah, ma, the meatloaf. <laughs> He's the meatloaf. Yes, yes, the meatloaf. Oh God, that was awesome, man. I love that movie. So yeah. good, dude. Will Ferrell's great. So good. Yeah, he, he he seriously everything he's done is pretty spot on great. I yeah. mean, it really is, man. Even Elf was great, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Elf was hilarious. They still show it every year at, at Christmas it. time. Every yeah, bro. Year. Every dude, legit. I remember like when when it came out. I don't remember what year it came out, but like every year after that in school, bro, we watched it every single year. It comes straight on. up. We dude. still watch it every year too. Oh yeah, bro. You already know. But yeah, that wraps it up for our movies. So I just want to take a quick second and uh, you know let you guys know to definitely go check out the website and go check out the uh, knowledge tab and also the server life tab. And also, if you have a couple bucks to spare, check out the merch. The cheapest thing we are selling on our website is the t-shirts. Uh, some of the t-shirts are like 10 to 15, I think, and some of them are 20. But if you want to go scoop some of those up, go to www.togetherftr.com and uh, check that stuff out. You know, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, wherever you can. I uh, really appreciate you guys. And like I said, I can't thank everybody enough for all the support that you all have given me and, you know, everybody involved. And it just means a great deal to me. But we're going to go ahead and get in to some topics because we got some things we want to talk about today. And the first thing, we're just going to get right into it, is the Little Mermaid issue. <laughs> the, the the outbreak of nonsense that is going on right now. It sounds funny the saying the Little Mermaid issue. Just that's <laughs> hilarious in its own. It literally is. That's a bold that's a bold title right there. The Little Mermaid issue. This is crazy, man. I I really I don't know. I'm going to start it off by saying Here's my thing. I understand completely why, like, I get why some of the people are outraged in the sense of, you know, the the perspective that all of us who were born in, you know, from 80, maybe 81 till now are all nostalgic. So we all want to hold on to things that were dear to us. But we got to remember when we were kids and before we were kids from the 1900s to 2000. You got to think, dude. All of our childhood things we're trying to hold on to were built by racist men. 
Absolutely. Racist white men who were just building things, you know, creating this entertainment. Walt Disney was a super racist. So obviously all of his characters were going to be white. Yeah. That's just how it goes. So I realized that perspective. People are like, oh, you know, I want to hold on to the nostalgic views and I want my childhood to be the same, blah, blah, blah. You got to get over that. You got to get over that, man, because we're talking about people who were super racist, creating things and literally not giving anybody a chance. But on the other side of the perspective, I got to say that I don't think it's even like Disney's trying, in my opinion, I feel like Disney's not trying to make an outbreak and they're not trying to be like progressive. I feel like they're doing it for marketing purposes. Absolutely. I feel like they're just doing it to get people to talk about it because look what we're doing right now. We're talking about it. You know? Who, who's to say that that the black girl just wasn't the best person for the job? Exactly. They bro. Hold, it could be they that hold simple. auditions for that. It could like, be that if, simple. If, if somebody, whoever the best is, you know, straight up, it, that's it, how it needs to be. And it shouldn't come down to it exactly. matter of skin color or not. This, exactly. She sang be. the best. She acted the best. That's so me. She got the part. Dude, as long here's my thing. As long as she can sing very well, I don't yeah. care. It doesn't bother me. I don't care right. what a person looks like. It doesn't bother me at all. She's a mermaid, bro, so it doesn't have to be, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Right. Now, personally, I'm going to say there are certain characters, in my opinion, who should have stayed the same in other movies. And I'm going to shed some light on that because I was talking to a friend of mine. He's real big into comic books, real mm-hmm. big. And we were speaking about it, and he said, you know, have you seen the new Spider-Man yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, you saw the one before that, Homecoming? Yeah. Okay, so you know how Flash Thompson is like an Indian kid? Mm-hmm. I really personally feel like that wasn't a good choice in the Marvel Universe because if you watch the cartoons or read the comics, man, he's this big, like, dumb jock white guy. Yeah. You know, and it was it was the role that he was meant to be. He was supposed to be poor. He wasn't supposed to be rich like this kid is and stuff. They kind of switched that re- that role, and right. I'm not really cool with that, but that's completely different. That has nothing to do with, like— They switched the whole role. Exactly. They, they switched— switch what the that, person looked that's like. That's what I mean. Yeah. They, they didn't just switch the look. Yeah. They, that's what we talked about. You yeah. know, we, me and my, my friend, we were discussing that, and I was like, you know— that makes perfect sense. That is a different scenario mm-hmm. where it's like, man, you changed a character— Right. It's not like you change just how a person looked. I don't care how they look. It, like, but if you change how they look, how they perceive, you know, how you perceive them, what they are, what they're about, their, you know, their honor, their, you know, their bad qualities, whatever it is. If you start changing the character, I'm going to be upset because right. I want the character to be how it's supposed to be. And well, right. I mean, my eyes, just a fan eye, you know, it's not like right. it really matters. But right. still, I feel like you know, fan choice does matter to an extent. You know, but I feel like this whole thing is nonsense. It, it, it's crazy. There, there's, like I said earlier, there's a lot more going on in the world than to be worried about why Ariel's black now. It literally makes no sense Who to. Who cares? Why would we worry about something so dumb? Well, obviously, there's a lot of people that do care, but. It's 2019, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's literally 2019. Why would you be worried about how somebody looks? I have never been worried about how somebody looks. The thing about me is I don't care how you look. As long as you're good to me, that's all that matters to me. So why would it ever matter? And like I said, you know, back jumping back to like, you know, how racist white men were the, you know, ringleaders of Hollywood. And that's why there was no black, you know, superheroes and there was no like black heroes in general to look up to Mm -hmm. dude it's it's time you know it's i'm not gonna say like it's only fair because that's a cop out but i'm saying like it's only it's only right you know like you can't just keep whitewashing everything you know it's not fair man like absolutely you know and i had to think about it in that perspective like think about you know think about you know a, a little black girl you know like think about a little black girl and she's wanting to find somebody like a Disney princess or something or something to have for her own, for her comfort, for her to feel good about, you know, for her to have a role model and stuff. When was the first one? I mean, you could say Jasmine, but she's Middle Eastern. Jasmine's not a black. That's what I mean. The first one technically Tiana? would be Tiana. And, from and Princess she, and the Frog. And, and think about how just, racist that was, she bro. She just came about in Louisiana. Very they were like dumb, kind of like it was like it was like messed up, you know, like we, backwoods. Like, bro. I, I was having a conversation the other night, and with that being said. I personally, Disney shouldn't have transformed a princess they already had and mm-hmm. made her black. Why not write yeah. a whole new storyline? like Something new. Like, Moana. Like Marvel did. You know? Mar- Marvel wrote the storyline for Black Panther. He yeah. comes from Africa. They told his story yeah. in Africa. And, and there was a lot of controversy about Black Panther, if you remember. Yeah, there was. And people can there say what they want, people. but that was probably one of the best movies that they had put out to date. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it was one of the what we're about to get into after this. It was one of the three one of the three best selling movies of its year. That was last year, right? Yeah, eighteen. 
18 was one of the be- it was one of the three that was the best selling movie of the year. This movie, literally, this movie hit Netflix before the year was out. Straight That's up, how bro. big it was. And here's the thing: you got to think, people. <clears throat> the whole uh, here's another perspective to think. I don't want to see Black Panther be white. You know, like no. I, I wouldn't want to see that, bro. It's There's not, certain characters I want to yeah. see certain things, and we have to admit that as humans. Absolutely. I don't want to see Black Panther as a white guy. Right. He's a black guy. That's just what right. it is, man. Absolutely. That's just what it is. But when it comes, we're, we're speaking about, we're, we're differentiating character and look. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like Black Panther, the roots of it are very African based. Right. They are Black Panther based. The Black Panthers was a group. You get mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, why would people want to change something like that? Right. So it, it's it's a really bizarre, sensitive subject people want to get on. Yeah. But for all those who are, you know, in their feelings about it, it just makes no sense. If they're changing the character, I'd be with you. But they're not changing the character. I, it's I same think, story, bro. I Come think on. All of this is just curtains from the oh, bigger 100%. picture of what, what's really going on, and we're not even paying attention to 100%. it. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, man. In social media and in and, and the internet and everything else, it and, and even media on TV. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely it, TV. It's just it's it's crazy how much they they throw in our face, so we can't see all the smoke and mirrors, and people really yeah. just. They they feed into it. It's bait, and they bite it and, yep. and run with it. And yep. It divides us and, and everything else, and it's terrible. But it's, it's, it segregates us, man. Yeah. It's horrible, Absolutely. you know. And, and and getting into that, man, I'm going to flip on to another subject about uh, last episode because I was talking to my dude before this, you know. Uh, and I just want to let you guys know that from the last episode, I didn't shine light on something I was supposed to shine light on. And talking to Stevie before, you know, uh, we got on here – he had made a great valid point that I didn't make on the last episode about the gay pride and the Black History Month. Because in my opinion, and we had agreed on this and already spoke about it, but in my opinion, I feel, for those of you who didn't watch, you know, I feel that there shouldn't be a gay pride month and I feel like there shouldn't be a Black History Month. Now, with that being said, um, they're very different on how they started because Black History Month started simply because there were, once again, racist white men making the rules for what was taught on different things, and black history was not being taught on the correct manner that it should have been, you know, deserved, you know, that was deserved by it. So Black History Month was started, you know, as a week, you said, right? It started out as mm-hmm. a week, and then it grew into a month. Yeah. And that is a wonderful concept, and I agree with that 100%. But what I was speaking on was a grand scale about, you know, things segregating us and labeling us into corners that we shouldn't be labeled into. Right. And I feel like we should be focused on all humans, mm-hmm. you know, all the time. Or certain months should be dedicated to human, uh, you know, Human rights and, you know, environmentalist and, like, animals, you know, like, things that right. are a part of this world, you know, like, not something very specific. But it definitely needs to be a dedicated, you know, presence to all things that need to be learned, you yeah. know, like, at the same time. So, you know, I just wanted to clear that up. I wanted to make that point because I, you know, I like to give all points of every perspective that I can and provide and I didn't think about that point, but that was yeah. a great point. I have to, you know, they were good examples, but I needed to say how that what they were about because the gay pride was more gay pride is more, you know, be proud of who you are, you know, so on and so forth, which Black History Month had turned into, you know, and has yeah. turned into to be proud, which is cool. I'm not I'm not telling people they shouldn't be proud, right. you know. I don't want people to butcher that and say like, "Oh yeah, he's saying this," you know. I'm saying that we need to worry about bigger things, you right. know, the earth and humans and animals, you know, because we're we're extincting th- you know, we're hunting things to extinction and we're killing things to extinction, you know, and that's that well, can't so be that, good. Yeah, that even goes hand in hand with not even on segregation yeah. and with, like you say how they how they put things in their own box and, mm-hmm. and keep them in their corner. Mm-hmm. Um, with all due respect to class to, war. To, to, bre- to breast people with breast cancer, you know, breast yeah. cancer survivors, you know, and, mm-hmm. and God rest the ones that's passed away. Yeah. Why is October just Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Yeah. Because I had had a stepfather that passed away from lung cancer, but there's yeah. no lung cancer month. I think there might be, but there's not as much light. It's it's almost yeah. like there's a Veterans Month, but there's not light on it like yeah. it should be. I yeah. guess. Yeah, like you there, know? there's like so many different forms of cancer, but we it, only yeah. spotlight straight up. The NFL players only wear pink on their socks for yeah. breast cancer awareness. You that's know, true. They, there's a lot of different colors in the in the cancer yeah. spectrum. Blue, gray, yeah. and, but yeah, that's just red, another, that's pink. just another example of it is marketing and, and marketing, dude. And, yeah, it's just. Medium and like Medium. I said, that's no disrespect to no to, to at any, all anybody that you know that that advocates for yeah. that. Like 
That's how we feel, 100. percent You know, yeah. I don't want to downplay anybody else to upbring. You know, I don't, I don't want a white guy month. I don't yeah. want a Polak month. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm Polish. You know, I don't right. want a Polak month. Like you right. know, like I don't care. Like it is what it is. I'm I don't biracial. Want that. I don't have. I mean, yeah. I, I guess I don't I, want that. I guess I halfway get February. But <laughs> why is it the shortest month? You know, like <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, that's not very progressive. Yeah. You know, gosh, man. But no, that's how I feel though. I don't want. I don't want a white guy month. I don't want nothing. I just want. I do want something. I want everybody to be treated the exact same. Yeah. I don't want any special treatment for anybody. I feel yeah. like we're all humans. We all need to all be treated the same. Granted, I know, like, you know, that's a very vague statement, but people who know, they know. People who don't, I don't know, hit Google up. I don't know what to tell you. Right. You know, like, you, you got to learn for yourself. It's just, it's something that can't be explained, I guess. Absolutely. So, yeah, Little Mermaid issue. Come on, guys. Tighten up. Get it together. You guys are being brainwashed, and it's a marketing thing. Excuse me. For Disney to make millions off There's of it. something bigger going on out there, guys. That, too, maybe. That, too. Or it could have just been one of those weird fluke ones, you know, because there's definitely cover-ups for big things going on, and then there's just flukes that just go viral, and then everybody just gets in their feelings about it. Disney changing the color of Ariel is not a fluke. That's true, bro. You're probably right. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah, but then again, it could be, like you said, it could have just been an audition type thing, and it could be as simple as poss- that. That's a possibility, too. I mean, it's not a big possibility, but it, it is, kind of. Yeah, you know, so, it's a little bit. But they're, they're, but it's true. It could be either one, man. It's weird. Ex- especially, like you say, for Walt Disney himself to... to Super racist. To, to be a racist. Super. For Disney to change Ariel to a black woman. And hopefully we're wrong on all aspects, and it's actually Absolutely. Disney wanting to be progressive. Let's hope it's that. Yeah, let's hope, let's so. hope That would be but, awesome. you know... In all honesty, we we're skeptics, so we're not going to think like that. No, we're going to think it's the not. worst, you know, yeah, or whatever. But we hope that I it think is. There's that. something more going yeah. on. That's just me. Oh know? yeah, and I think you know I uh, you know I I want it to be something that you know we're not thinking, but I just don't think that's how it works, man. But it is what it is. If you guys have anything to add on that, definitely comment and let us know how you feel for sure. Uh, next thing, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with this I was telling you about is, uh, you know, Netflix is on the back track right now. They're really, you know, they're, they were the powerhouse of the streaming services, man. But now they got some competition coming up. They got Prime. They got Hulu. They got, you know, all these other, you know, uh, Crackle and, uh, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they also got Disney Plus coming up this year. And it's going to be six ninety nine a month. That's half of what Netflix cost. And... Let's go ahead and read them off. For 2017, 2018, and 2019, the top three best-selling movies are all owned by Disney. 2017, Star Wars The Last Jedi, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and Beauty and the Beast. 2018, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, and Incredibles 2. 19, Avengers Endgame, Captain Marvel, and Aladdin. So these are the top three best-selling movies for three years in a row. Disney's about to take the game over. Netflix is going to be a thing of the past, man. They better hope they can get all the comedians in before because that's their bread and butter right now. Or as long as they don't change any characters from black or white, they believe be that, right. bro. <laughs> they better, as long as they, as long as they don't change nobody on Netflix original, yeah, um, into a black guy, we're okay. We're good. Yeah, I'm, God, Netflix, come D- on. Disney, Disney is coming out with 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 better movies, but you got to also keep in mind that Disney has a lot of. Family and children movies. Yes. So, so it'll be this good. It, it'll be great for the kids. Yeah, for but, sure. It's like a more family based. Netflix is kind of gritty. Yeah, you, I mean it's family based too, but it's gritty, dude. It's got some stuff. It's you got some you, stuff you on. can't get on. You can't get on the Disney one and watch and um, Stranger Things. It's, no, it's not going to be on Disney. Exactly, and that's another one. You got Peaky Blinders. I don't know if you've seen that. You gotta watch. No, I gotta, that, I gotta bro. watch it. I haven't oh, seen that. God, it's yeah, good. I haven't seen Peaky that. Peaky Blinders. It's brutal. Uh, the Last Kingdom. Dude, there's a lot of good Netflix originals, man. Uh, yeah, super, super good. Uh, but yeah, Disney Plus will be released uh, later this year for six ninety nine, and uh, you know Netflix might be in trouble. I don't know. We're gonna see. Uh, like I, said, I may though, just keep Netflix. I'll, I'll keep Netflix and get that for the kids. So That's what I'm thinking too. I'm probably so. gonna keep Netflix just because, like you said, man, Stranger Things. You already caught up. Uh, yeah. Oh God. Well, I'm not drop... All the way. Okay, kind okay. of. I'm not, all gonna the way. No, I'm not gonna drop no spoilers. I don't want to do that to anybody because I don't like people doing that to me. But oh, it's man. a great show. Oh, it's dude, it's great, great it's man. It's so good. Netflix. They kill it. Look, Netflix isn't going anywhere. Yeah, you're, you're probably the right. names that they have now. Bit, the names that they have now doing movies. That's true. Like yeah, well, Will Smith, bro, for Bright. I mean, dude, they've yeah. had some hitters, man. They I really mean, have big, big, big hitters. Like for real. Netflix has came a long way. 
And I just want to take a second, guys. New movies coming soon. We got July 19th, The Lion King comes out. I'm so <laughs> pumped. Like, I'm, I'm so pumped. I want to see this movie so bad. Oh, but God. I will not go to a movie theater when it's completely packed. Oh, it's going to be I, packed. Especially this one because there's going to oh, be. Sorry. You know. I love my kids and I do <laughs> I do well with kids, but people who don't tell their kids to be quiet oh, at movie yeah. theaters oh, when, when they're being loud, I can't stand it, it irritates me. Yeah, I'm about to take my son to his first movie. Uh, he just turned three literally yesterday. And I'm going to take him to his first movie probably tomorrow. And I'm just going to go to an early movie. There you go. And, you know, I'm not going to bother nobody. I'm going to make sure, you know, I'm going to try to teach him because you got to, I mean, there's going to be a day where you got to take them, you know, but like you got to wait until they're old enough, man, in my opinion, simply because I'm respectful of other people, dude. If I go to a movie theater, I don't want to hear you're crying, kid. No. Straight up. You need to, if you got a baby, I'm sorry. You should have got a babysitter. I'm sorry. My we'll, bad. You my know? kids know we'll get up and leave if they Well, that's the thing. Up. My yeah. daughter, you know, she's older, so like, she's cool. She, you know, it's no big deal. But where Bub is still little, I haven't had a chance to take him yet. Yeah. So when I take him, as you know, I just gotta teach him the rules. Let him know, hey, you gotta be quiet. Right. We're gonna get some candy. You know, whatever. We're gonna chill. Whatever you want to do. And you know, whatever. Yeah. But you know, I'm gonna have to you know cross that bridge soon. And I'm definitely in agreement with you, my friend, that I can't stand you know uh, people who bring their kids and they just don't they don't shush them. Which is know? why I wait till about two weeks after yeah. Lion King comes out. Oh, yeah, bro, for real. No, hit the earliest morning they got. Yeah. You know, the 10 10. You know, and everybody's like, still at work. For real, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. Hopefully no lie, a, dude. Hopefully, I have a day off. And then we got July 26th, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Have you seen the trailer for this? I have not. Oh, man. Tarantino's saying this might be his last film. Oh. This is, uh, yeah. Tarantino it's, uh, films are always Oh, great. dude. Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, first time ever in a movie together. Wow. Yeah, man. This is going to be awesome. Uh, super cool movie coming out July 26th, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Make sure to go check that out, out guys. Um, and then August 2nd, I'm actually not caught up to date on the Fast and Furiouses. Uh, I stopped watching them probably like four or five. I don't know, bro. Like, I, I just I quit. stopped with Tokyo Drift. Dude, Tokyo Drift was sick, though. It, it was, was all right, probably, bro. Yeah, yeah it was, it was right. good, but that, that was probably the last one I saw, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I think I saw four. I think I saw the one after that. Uh, or maybe the one after that, but it definitely, I haven't seen the recent ones, man. But Hobbs and Shaw's coming out, and it looks pretty good, bro. So I might have to catch up on the Fast and Furious just to watch it. Because yeah. one, I love The Rock, bro. I love him. Idris Elba, love him. Yeah. Jason Statham, love him, bro. Right. Dude, yeah. all three of those actors are awesome. I mean, it'll be. It, I'm not saying their movies weren't good. I yeah, just, I, I, I fell I off. Lost. Yeah, I did. I fell I, off, Like man. I said, with the Fast and Furious, it was over for me. I fell off, man. But, uh, yeah, so those are three great movies coming out, guys. Make sure to go to your local movie theaters and check them out. I'll be checking them out and uh, doing some reviews on them. Like I said, I got some catching up to do on Fast and Furious before I go see Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, So, yeah, man, next thing I want to talk about is I know you haven't heard of this yet, but I kind of want to shed some light to the people and to you about this situation, about uh, the ice cream licking lady. That's what I'm going to call her, ice cream licking lady. Because she's about to do some time, bro. Okay, did you know that tampering with food is, like, above a felony? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what I read. Mm-hmm. It's above a felony. So this chick, I don't know how old she was. I think she was a grown-up. I think she was, like, a you know, a real adult, you know? Yeah. Goes into Walmart, you know, opens a tub of, you know, ice cream and licks it and puts it back on and puts it back. Straight up. Just licks it, put it back on, boom, puts it back cameras at walmart catch him or catch her you know and they're like oh you know okay this is about to go down we're about to get this chick you know so what they do is they they're trying to figure it out you know they're like who is this chick they're blasting all over social media yada yada and uh so they called the company that the ice cream was that she licked mm-hmm. to get it even more extended bro like we're, we're really reaching out now right so walmart you know they call their homies at blue bear <laughs> blue bunny or whatever bro right. they're like hey we need some help over here we can't find this chick blast it on twitter find the chick and she's going to be fined i think a thousand dollars and she's going to see two to 20 years in prison for licking ice cream and putting it back she probably should have just stole it <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kids. I don't hope, do that. I, don't do that. But I hope like, she gets every day for it, bro. If she still, I hope that, she gets every day. What's crazy is that that's what's so wrong with our with our system. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. If she oh, yeah. if she takes that same ice cream out of the store, she wouldn't got much. It's a misdemeanor. Yeah, you're literally. going to get a ticket. Yep. And maybe they're going to tell you you can't come back to the store that you're in anymore. Yep, you are absolutely that's right. That's the most that's going to happen to you. Yep. But you she lick it, you lick it, it and you put, put it, it back. back. It's over. 
You You're were done. Going, wow. You're going to prison. They're they're putting on trial. Wow. Bro. Yeah, That's... you got people out here who were like real bad people, wicked people, man. We're locking people up for licking ice cream. Yeah, straight up. Look, I'm not gonna disagree with that. She should get locked up oh. because that's some nasty stuff. Well, I mean, no, she should do every single day. Yeah, yeah no, what? but our system is flawed in that sense, man. It really is. You're right. That's a great val. That's a valid point, man. Like, you got pe- if you stole it, you wouldn't have gotten as much trouble. Like, I would. Thieving, bro. I would test her for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> if you test dirty for ice cream, you're getting locked up. Done. I'm putting you on ice cream you probation. Done, <laughs> son. You're getting two to 20. You got too much l- lactose in your system. Oh, you're in trouble. Man. I can't believe that, dude. I can't believe it. That's so crazy. Nuts. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. That's great, yeah. though. That's it's actually kind of funny, dude. It's hilarious, but like at the same time, like I, I kind of feel I kind of feel bad for the chick or whatever. Like she probably just thought it was, she was being a funny person. Like, haha, I'm gonna lick the ice cream and put it back. Haha. Oh my god, I'm about do to you do remember two her to age? twenty. Dude, I don't know. I'll look it up because if she's a kid, I'm gonna feel bad for saying she should go to prison. Wow. Uh, but maybe I'm not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> ice cream. Uh, I don't even know. I think it was Blue Bunny or something. Something at Walmart. I want to send, might I be a send grown her up. some ice cream. I, I want <laughs> send her some to the prison. She's going to blow up off this and get rich, bro. Yeah, that's absolutely. what our society does. Yeah. Literally. Uh, yeah. And that's what literally what's going to happen. She's going to blow up. She's going to get super rich off the memes. And then she's going to come out of prison Real rich. But you can go to Let's most any here. ice cream shop and get free samples. Literally, yeah, bro. <laughs> Basket Robbins are hooking it up. I'd say you saw it on Stranger Things, you know, uh, Lucas's little sister, she comes in there and get samples of ice cream. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I don't think it says how old she is. It was a video. That's what it was. It was a video of her doing it. Yeah, dude. Let's see. Oh, so Blue, she's it, trying Blue to, Bell. That's what it was. Not Blue Bunny. She Blue she Bell. She was trying to go viral. That's oh, what yeah, it was. Bro. And she did. Oh, and my God. Like, get in trouble for and it. And she put it, it back. Wow. The, she looks like a grown woman, bro. No, I don't know, man. Uh, she on. looks kind of young. Yeah. It says, police said she could face up to 20 years in prison, felony tampering. Uh, let's see here. I'm not seeing an age on it, though. I don't know how old she is. Maybe she is young, man. She looks kind of young. She'd be a teenager, maybe. It doesn't say her name, though. Or not her name, but it doesn't say her uh, age, man. That's crazy. Um... But yeah, super gross. Come on, kids. Just get it together. If you're a grown... Uh, no, no. Hold on. Here we go. Under the age of 17. Child. Yeah, she's a kid. She's a kid. She still needs to go... She needs to get in trouble. Absolutely. She maybe not do, Maybe not go to prison. Absolutely. Her parents need to be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Her parents need to be reprimanded. You know, and also, I saw another thing, man. I don't know if you saw this video, but it was a kid around here, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it was, uh, I guess, like these these kids, man. I don't even know. But like one of them was like... One of the little boys was fighting the other little boy or something. They were in the backyard or something. And I guess the one kid's, like, autistic or something. And, mm-hmm. like, the other kid was just bullying him or whatever, a little scrawny kid. And uh, and then a chick punched him in his face, too, on video. This was, like, down, like, down on, like, Railroad Avenue or something, bro. Or like, oh, wow. Yeah, dude. I was like, what is going on, bro? These little kids are stupid, man. I can't deal with little kids, man. Like, I've re- like I mean, I'm not going to say that there weren't horrific things going on when I was a kid, too, because kids are just awful. They really are. But, like, I don't know. I don't really remember anybody ever picking on anybody with, like, special needs or, like, you know, autism or stuff like that. Like, I really don't remember any of that, man. No, not, I'll probably never let nothing like that stand out. Never I, I around a, me. I got a very soft spot. In my never, my, bro. My, my dad used to work with special needs guys when, yeah. I was, when I was a young, young, so. Yeah. But this girl, the ice cream lady. Crazy. Um, yeah, and she's not even lady. The ice cream child, I want to yeah. say. Ice cream yeah. girl. That's what I'm talking Ice cream uh, licking child. Yeah, ice cream licking at. child. Like, you know your parents never showed you that when you went to a store. Yeah, come on now. So I hope Try that, to be funny. I hope that when you went home and they found out it was you, mm-hmm. I hope that they did it. It took them a while, I think. Yeah. Well, I think it I, took them a while, too. I hope, uh, your par- I hope you got in trouble by your parents, and yes, you deserve some kind of punishment, because that was for just stupid. real. Come on, get it together, kids. Uh, but yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up for the night. Go ahead and tell them where they can go check you out one more time, my friend. Um, check me out on Facebook, S.Jekyll's. Um, also on my YouTube page, S.Jekyll's, S period, J-E-K-E-L-S. Um, there we go, baby. Uh, be on the lookout for, for the new EP coming soon. We're working on it, baby. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, like I said, I'll drop his links for Facebook and YouTube uh, on the description on this uh, you know, uh, video here. And once again, go check out my man, S. Jekylls, and also go to www.togetherftr.com 
It's been a blessed episode, baby. Uh, episode 29, for the record, tune in.